Hello. 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 Hi. Hi, it's Guys Bowling from JoeBlow.com. How are you doing today? Oh, nice to see you. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm great. Um, I have to say, I'm like, I'm having a, I'm trying not to have a pinch me moment right now because as you can tell from the background, I'm a huge horror movie fan. Oh and as a gosh. huge horror movie fan, you have to be a huge Robert Crampton fan. So it is an oh, honor to be able to speak you. with you, even for a little bit. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, no problem. Um, how did you become involved with this project? Um, like, uh, did Ricky approach you? Like, uh, or did were you familiar with him at first, or just how did it come about? Oh, yeah. Oh, totally. I was very familiar with him. I've been following his career for years, and I had seen Excision when it first came out, and it really blew me away. So I was a big fan. A mutual friend of ours called me and said, Ricky Bates wants your number. Could he have it? And I said, yeah, of course. So I was <laughs> waiting by the phone until he called me. And then he said, I'm doing a new movie, and I'd like you to be in it. And I said, yes, even without reading the script, because <laughs> anything Ricky does, I wanted to be involved if he right. wanted me to be in it. So I read it and I was really surprised that it was a comedy more than yeah. you know, all of his other movies, which I, I feel like he's very much has his own style and he's really an auteur. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I was surprised at this movie and the tone of it was very different from anything else I'd seen from him. But of course, I loved the script and loved what it was saying. And it's about this guy played by Matthew Gray Gubler, who's the head of a coven, and he's trying to find himself and, you know, make peace with his past and who he is as a person and move forward. And how do you move forward and feel good about yourself, to, you know, depending on whatever your past was. Right. So it's, a, it's sort of a comment on that. And I've been enjoying lately playing some, you know, less than nice roles and, you know, <laughs> well, for people. Well, it's that, fun to play though, yeah. <laughs> this is fun, it's just yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah. So, so, you know, and, and hopefully it helps his character, you know, and informs the audience about why he is the way he is or why he's struggling, the character of Thorn and looking at his past and understanding you know, that from, from how his mother, um, treated him or treats him. Right. And, and yeah, so, uh, I was all down for it. Uh, Ricky Bates at first comedy. Yeah. 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 And, uh, I, when I talked to him on Monday, I, I told him like within the first five minutes of the movie, I like the humor right away. I was just like, all right, this is my wheelhouse. I get it. I get what you're doing. Um, it, what I loved about it is that there is this absurdly like dark comedy stuff going on but yes. it also has like this air of sincerity to it though like it has like a beating heart in it and I and that tone is hard to get right and I thought he really nailed it with like everything that he was doing in it um mm -hmm. as far as your character was concerned did he was it kind of just all on the page of like who she was or did he kind of try to kind of explain to you like how she kind of influenced Thorne's life and like you know, where he kind of came from dealing with her and where he's trying to end up or where he ends up now. I mean, I think Ricky is very collaborative and we did talk about it when I got to the set a, a lot, but he was very open to what I had to say. And I think it was also really there on the page. There were, there were, uh, there was one particular moment though. I remember at the end where I added something that wasn't in the script and he said, that's it. That that's the character right there. And that was when, because really my, my role is a supporting smaller role, but it does have an arc, you know, yeah. I come in and you see that she's just not, she's very um, unforgiving and, and really yeah. judgmental. And then you see that she's caring for her own mother and right. the challenges that that has on her and puts on her and the stress on her. And then she does feel the weight of the relationship of her son not really being fulfilled or not being right. good and there's a strain between them so at the so at the one of the last scenes i'm thinking about an exchange that i had with him and then you know before i turn out the light i just kind of go like this no and ricky said oh my god that's it that's it that's all we needed that's the whole character yeah. so i said oh okay good okay <laughs> great yeah i got it so but but i feel like he 
he's so detail oriented and so clever in his dialogue and in the structure of the whole movie that those little things that an actor does, you get those clues from the writer. I mean, you get that from the material. So you're picking it up from what he's kind of putting down. Exactly. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. I, um, I, I always think it's cool, especially with genre films, especially in horror, like, you know, horror fans get it, but I, I don't think they get enough credit with like some of the commentary that they have in them. And some of the, like, you know, with your kind of your character in this, it could easily, you could easily just be like, well, she's evil, she's mean, she's this, but there, but she's also, like you said, dealing with her own stuff and she's kind of like putting that out on her son. Right. So like, it, so it's very yeah. interesting stuff. Like, I mean, all the, all these like nuances and something that could be viewed as just like a dark comedy and just something funny and silly, but yeah. you really want to take the time to really sit and watch. Yeah. There's so much more to pull out of it. Yeah. Cool. I mean, and what you're, what you're saying about horror in general is true. I mean, there's, there's so much more there. And even though this is horror adjacent because right. you know, it's about witches, but it's, it's really a, a, a life affirming movie in a way. Um, I do feel like with horror, we deal with the base, the basic human emotion of fear that we're all walking around with every day of our lives. We're fearful right. about so many things. We can't even talk about it, you know, but the other side of fear is empathy right. and understanding why people do the things that they do and, and having, you know, some, some tenderness about that. And I feel like the horror genre does that in space. Yeah. You know, we, 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 the best horror does that. I think. Yeah, for Sure. I agree. Um, I want to know what it's like for you because you know, you are, you are an icon of the genre um, and I'm just going to say it, you, know, you are, and, you know, so many people that come up and make films like these or like, they are making films now. I've like grown up and been like, oh, I've been a fan of hers in this. Or I'm a fan mm -hmm. of like this particular film. Like, how does it feel for you as like an actress when like these guys who are making these movies now kind of circle back and they're like, I want her in yeah. my movie. I mean, I, I think that's an awesome thing. But like, it but is. thank you for mentioning. It's very gratifying. And I don't think I'd be back on the scene today had it not been for Adam Wingard and Simon Barrett in yeah. uh, 2011 saying, oh, we, we need a horror movie matriarch for our movie, You're Next. Who could we get? And I was the first person they thought of. And then they called me and I hadn't worked for years. And really at that point, and just before that, I thought I was done because when I hit my late thirties, I wasn't really getting a lot of jobs and calls yeah. and auditions. And then I got married and I had my kids and I was just focusing on that. And the call for your next came out of the blue. And then it reinvigorated my feeling that I wanted to work in films again, if people would allow me to, or yeah. like me to. And because Adam and Simon loved the films that I made growing up, um, when they were growing up, they, they remembered me and they thought of me and it's given me a second life. I've been reanimated. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot to be said about having like your second act, right? I mean, like it, and I feel like, like it's better now. I feel like my second act is better than my first yeah, act. You know, and I hear so many people like say that, like, you know, like I, maybe because like, you know, you, you kind of, you get started and you, you've had like a little bit of fame and then you kind of, you know, things kind of taper off and then, I feel yeah. like it is a little gratifying to kind of be brought back into it. And like, you're like, these people care. They like the stuff that I used to make. Yeah. And like, now they want me back. And that has, I mean, I think that's a really cool thing that I, I have. Yeah. I feel, I feel all that, that you're saying. I do. I'm so grateful and thankful. I actually can't believe that I'm still here making movies and enjoying myself and working with a lot of young people and people still call me and say, you know, I saw, I mean, Ricky is an example of that too. Just growing up and liking my movies and then uh, calling somebody and saying, oh, I'd really like to have her for this. So, I mean, that's just, that's just me so meaningful to me. Right. Yeah, it's great. It's awesome. And, um, you know, they're wrapping me up right now, but I wanted to say it's an honor speaking with you. I've, I've gotten to do a lot of these more recently, um, yeah. but just as someone that's just as a fan, this has just been like a true, like, great moment for me so oh. thank you so much i really appreciate oh. it thank you so much i really no appreciate that okay you take care of yourself you too bye we're so lucky to have found each other luck had nothing to do with it to the great horned god and our dear mother goddess 
My name's Thorn, and I'm a witch. Can I get an antiseptic wet? You know how important it is to me to practice safe blood magic. This is my life partner, Willow. You've got five seconds to get off my lawn before I cut you up into communion wafers. I'm too shabby for a couple of outcasts. And this is my coven. We're not having a big fire this year. Why? It just doesn't feel like Beltane without a big bonfire. Light a candle. What on earth are they doing? They're making a statement. This was the calm before the storm. Before my past finally caught up with me. Who are you? Prom king. Class president. Date you play sports. The cross. <laughs> this coven is built on a foundation of lies. Banish him. Banish him. Banish him. I'm going on a walkabout. You're too old for a walkabout. You have weak ankles. You forced me to face my past and now I've got to deal with it. Hello, son. You told me your mother is dead. There's the broad. I know it's gotten into me lately. Ah! I'm here to help. Merlin. You're killing the mood. I'm a work in progress! Thornton Adams? What happened to you? I went searching for happiness, and I found it.